In the last two lectures, we have seen how to represent continuous time signals mathematically, but there was one constraint over the method which we followed. The method was only applicable for those signals which are related to ramp and step. This constraint is important because it is also applicable for the method which we are going to see in this lecture. So in this lecture, we will learn how we can differentiate continuous time signals quickly. There are two different methods. The method number one is the graphical method and the method number two is the mathematical method. I will write down the two methods here. The first method is the graphical method. Graphical method. And we will focus more on graphical method because we can differentiate the signal waveform very quickly following the graphical method. The second method is the mathematical method is the mathematical method and you already know the mathematical method you know how to differentiate the functions for example if the function is if the function is ft and it is equal to t square then if you differentiate this function you have d ft by dt and it is equal to twice of t so this is simple mathematical method but as I told you, there is one constraint over the method which we are going to follow more, that is the graphical method. And this method is only applicable for those signals which are related to ramp and step. So we will also limit our study of the mathematical method to the signals which are related to ramp and step. So this is what we are going to do in this lecture. And you will see mathematical method is little bit longer as compared to the graphical method. And before starting the graphical method, I will first give you one small introduction of differentiation and what do we mean by slope. Let's say the signal xt is there. This means we have a signal or function which is dependent on t. This t is time here. So t is an independent variable and xt is a dependent variable. And whenever you differentiate this function or signal with respect to t, you will get something. But if you differentiate this function with respect to some other independent variable, for example, let's differentiate xt with respect to distance, I will represent distance or displacement by s, then it is going to be zero because xt will be independent of distance or displacement. So in our analysis, we will always differentiate the continuous time signal with respect to time because in signals and systems, the subject which we are studying the signal is what? Signal is variation of electrical quantities like current or voltage with respect to time. So we will differentiate them with respect to time, not with some other independent variable. Now when you differentiate a signal with respect to the independent variable, you will get something known as slope and you need to differentiate only one time. This means the first derivative of the signal with respect to its independent variable will give you the slope of the signal with respect to the independent variable. This means if I differentiate signal xt with respect to time, which is the independent variable of signal xt, then we will have the slope of signal xt with respect to time. So slope is an important term to know. And as you have already studied straight lines, you know what is a slope. I will explain slope by the help of two straight lines. Let's say this is our first straight line and this is our second straight line. And if you compare the slopes of first straight line and second straight line by just looking at the lines, we can say that the slope of first straight line is less than the slope of second straight line. We can also calculate the slope by calculating the tan theta. For example, in this line, if it is making an angle theta with the x-axis, then tan theta, tan theta will be the slope of first line. And if it is making, let's say, theta 2, then tan theta 2 will be the slope of second line. We are having tan theta as the slope because slope is dependent on the ratio of perpendicular to the base and perpendicular to the base is equal to tan theta if theta is the angle. So the slope is equal to tan theta 
and we can easily calculate the slope if we have the information about the two points on the straight line. For example, if we talk about the first line, then it is passing through the origin, second line is also passing through the origin. So we have the information about the first point and if we also have the information about the second point, it can be any point on the line, then we can easily calculate the slope as well as the equation of the line. So this is one old stuff which you must know. Now we will directly dive into the graphical method and we will use the concept of slope. If we have a line like this, then what will be the slope? The slope will be equal to zero because you can see perpendicular is equal to zero and when perpendicular is equal to zero, tan theta is equal to zero or you can see theta is equal to zero. So tan zero is equal to zero. So the slope is zero in this case. And if we have a line like this, line like this, then in this case, the slope is infinity because you can see base is equal to zero. And when base is zero, we will have tan theta equal to infinity or tan 90 degree. Theta is 90 degree in this case. So tan 90 degree is also equal to infinity. So these two cases are important. And if you have a line like this, then in this case, you will find theta is more than 90 degree. And when this happens, the slope is going to be negative. So this is all you need to know about the slopes. And now let's see the first example to understand the graphical method as well as the mathematical method. So this is the signal waveform, the signal waveform of signal XT. And to make you understand why graphical method is easy, I will first explain this question by the help of mathematical method. So whenever you have the waveform, the first thing you have to do is to find out the mathematical representation of the signal waveform. And we can do this by the help of last two lectures, what we have studied over there. So we will follow the signal flow like this. So initially signal XT is equal to zero. And then you can see there is upward turn. So the signal flow will become like this. And as there is upward turn, I will take positive sign and the magnitude of slope is equal to four divided by two, that is two. And the ramp will be RT, RT minus zero is equal to RT. And now the signal is taking downward turn and the new flow of the signal is like this. For downward turn, I will take negative sign and then we have 2R T minus 2. The slope will remain same because this angle is same as this angle. So we can say signal XT is equal to 2R T minus 2R T minus 2. So this is the mathematical representation of signal XT. And now we can easily differentiate it. We will differentiate it DXT over DT. Differentiation of 2RT is equal to 2UT because differentiation of ramp signal results into step signal and then differentiation of 2RT minus 2 will be 2UT minus 2. So this is what we have after differentiating signal XT with respect to T and now we can easily plot the waveform of DXT by DT. It is not that easy as compared to the graphical method. But if you compare it with the questions which we have done already, then it's not that difficult. So the first thing we need to do is to plot the waveform of 2UT. So I will do it quickly. I will plot the waveform of 2UT. This is how the waveform of 2UT will look, 2UT. And then we will plot the waveform of 2UT minus 2, 2UT minus 2. I will change the color for this. Let's say this is time t equal to 2. So 2ut minus 2 means the magnitude or the step is going to be 2 and the signal will be shifted towards the right by 2. So this is how the waveform will look. But here it is negative. This means we need to subtract the blue waveform from the pink waveform. So this portion will be removed and we have the waveform like this. So this is the final waveform and this is our answer. Now let's see how we can obtain the same result following the graphical method. Let's follow it. From minus infinity to zero, signal XT is zero. And if you see this, you will find slope is equal to zero because I have already given you examples. And in this, you can see slope is zero. So when you differentiate signal XT from minus infinity to zero, you are going to get zero. So we will have the waveform like this. Now from 0 to 2, 
signal x t is having some slope and we can calculate the slope it is 4 by 2 so the slope is equal to 2 and it will remain same from 0 to 2 so we will have the slope equal to 2 it is a constant value so we will have the waveform like this and we are plotting this waveform for d x t by d t now from 2 to infinity you can see signal x t is equal to 4 and again the waveform is like this it is flat so the slope is going to be 0 when you differentiate it with respect to time you will get 0 so again we will have slope equal to 0 so this is the final waveform of dxt by dt and if you compare the waveform you will find it is same it is same as the waveform we obtained in the second method that is the mathematical method so I think you now understand what is the difference between graphical method and mathematical method and you can see graphical method is very easy to implement. The time taken to obtain the result is very less as compared to the mathematical method. Here we first need to obtain the expression or mathematical representation of signal itself. Then we need to perform the differentiation and after that we need to plot the waveform. So chances are more that you will commit some mistake in the second method. So follow the first method whenever you have the signal related to ramp and step. Now let's solve the second example. The second example is having a different waveform and it is like this. Now this time we have step signal instead of ramp signal like the previous case we have this step signal. So let's quickly obtain the waveform, the waveform of d x t over d t from minus infinity to zero signal x t is zero which is a constant value so again we are going to get slope equal to 0 like this from 0 to 2 signal xt is equal to 4 which is a constant value so again slope is equal to 0 from 0 to 2 when t is equal to 0 there is discontinuity and if you see the waveform you will find it is rising edge and the example I have given initially this is the case we are having now and in this case the slope is equal to infinity the slope is equal to infinity when t is equal to 0 and to represent it in terms of signal we need to draw the impulse because impulse is having the value equal to infinity so this is what we have when t is equal to 0 and the weight of the impulse is now important thing to find out here the discontinuity is from 0 to 4 so if you see the total or net value of discontinuity it is equal to 4 so we will have the weight of impulse equal to 4 okay now from 2 to infinity again signal value is equal to 0 which is a constant so we have 0 slope now when t is equal to 2 we have the falling edge we have the falling edge I can say this is falling edge because we are following the signal flow like this so when t is equal to 2 we have the falling edge and this time also the slope is going to be infinity but it will be represented by an impulse having the weight equal to minus 4 minus 4 because this is falling when it was rising we had 4 and when it is falling we have minus 4 so differentiation of signal xt is giving us two impulses one at t equal to 0 having the weight 4 and other at t equal to 2 having the weight minus 4 so in this way you can have the differentiation of signal waveform quickly by following the graphical method now we will follow we will follow the mathematical method and for that we will first obtain the mathematical representation of signal xt we will follow the signal from left side and this will be the flow of the signal initially it is 0 and uh, here we have the level switching and it is the upward level switching therefore we will have positive sign and the level switching is from 0 to 4 so we will have 4 here and the step signal will be ut minus 0 or simply ut and after this this will be the flow of the signal this will be the flow of the signal and when t is equal to 2 the signal is falling it is falling or you can say there is downward level switching therefore we have negative sign and this step signal will be 4 u t minus 2 I will simplify this and it will give us 4 u t minus 4 u t minus 2 so this is the mathematical representation of signal x t and now we will differentiate it dxt over dt 
the differentiation of step is impulse so we will have 4 delta t minus 4 delta t minus 2 and this is what we have as the dx t by dt following the graphical method if you see the first impulse it is located at t equal to 0 and having the weight 4 so 4 delta t for the first impulse and then the second impulse is located at t equal to 2 so we have delta t minus 2 the weight of the impulse is equal to minus 4 so we have minus 4 so you can follow any of the two methods but it is suggested to follow the graphical method in the coming presentations we will solve few more examples based on what we have learned in this lecture and thus if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section now i will end this lecture here see you in the next one